Hi everyone, uh, to your question, we are starting. We're not getting delayed. We just had to close these last minute things here and people usually come late anyway. Um, so thank you all. Let me open the presentation so we can start. Da -da -da. Share my screen. Before I do that though, hi everyone. Um, I'd like to know where you're coming from. So if you can go to the chat and just say your name or hi and from where are you, that would be great. I'm Tzachi, I'm from Israel. Uh, Joao, you're from? Lisbon, Portugal. Lisbon, Portugal. Okay, let's see what we have here. Atlanta, Moscow, Poland, Paris, India, Boston, Singapore, Czech Republic, Washington, India. I'm going to stop there, but great. So we've got a lot of people from around the world. First of all, thank you for being here with us. And if you want to ask anything, that we're going to answer in the end, put it in the Q&A. Okay, there should be somewhere an icon at the top, I think, for questions, you can ask questions there. If there are issues that you have with what we're doing now, just put it in the chat and we are going to check that out. Alexander, to your question, the, yes, this is WebRTC based. This is an intermediate any meeting platform um, and we use them here. Uh, I use them uh, in WebRTC. TestRTC and also in Blogic.me. I like this specific platform because it's a bit old style, which I really like. It's not the fancy one that moves things around so it doesn't kill your CPU on one hand. On the other hand, it's really comfortable for me. Okay. Um, so that's why I'm using it. So let's start by switching to presentation mode, which means sharing my screen. Okay. So I'm here today um, with uh, Joao Gaspar. Can you say a few words about yourself? Sure, thanks for introducing Sahi. So my name is Joao, as Sahi said. Um, I work for TalkDesk. Uh, it's a, a contact center as a service product, uh, as I'm sure some of you uh, know. And um, I've been running global support uh, in, in TalkDesk for almost two years, okay? We have a big customer base, 1,800 uh, customers. We Our product is used by more than 30,000 uh, agents all over the world. And yeah, very excited to to be here and to to, to do this webinar with Sahi. So I thank you for actually being here. Uh, when I asked, I was surprised that you said yes so fast. So really thank you about that. Uh, I'm Sahi Levent Levy. I'm co-founder and CEO of TestRTC. And also I write stuff at Blogic.me. Uh, what we are going to talk about today is how to analyze WebRTC network issues in minutes and not hours or days. Um, the funny thing is that there, I didn't know that it, it, it is a problem or a challenge until Joao came and said that there is a problem and we kind of solved it together. Uh, and I'm really proud of, of the result that we have. So in this presentation or in this webinar, what we are going to do is to go through why network issues are such a challenge with WebRTC, what's the problem there, and why this is a burden to support teams, okay? Then a bit about what are some common network configurations um, that people encounter, and this is interesting because when I reviewed this and worked on this uh, slide deck with Joao, there are a lot of new things that I learned of how they end up using uh, you know, the tool that we worked on together. That was really interesting for me. And then we're going to go how you can analyze um, and assist the users to improve their core quality and user, user experience. The third one is like something I want to, you to remember at the back of your hand throughout this webinar because it's going to be there in almost every uh, each and every slide in the deck. So let's start. And I guess the problem starts with this. We have a user, okay? That user has a browser and he's using WebRTC. And he's doing that to connect to our service or to your service. Now, guess what? Your service has code in it, and that's your code. Someone, a developer in your company, or even you, wrote that code, implemented it, made it connect to that user to run his service, to run your service for him. Now, somewhere between your code and your service, there's almost always today, almost, not always, but almost always, 
an IaaS vendor, a PaaS vendor, someone like you know, Amazon AWS or Google Cloud or Azure or DigitalOcean or, or some provider that gave you the machines and build the internal networks between these machines and let you do all of these cool things that we do today with uh, serverless and functions and uh, managed databases and whatever it is that we have on the cloud. Storage, you know, CPUs. <clears throat> now, that's half of the story. The other half is the user. This user has a device and he's using his service, your service from his device. You don't have access to his device or you don't really own his device or know what the device is going to be before he comes and enters your service. Worse yet, you don't really know what his network connection is like. It's not as if you can make that decision. We're now shifting everything from on-premise towards the cloud. So we're relinquishing control of everything that goes. We no longer go and inst install our code in his <clears throat> um, office, in his network, and on his device. We run a code in the internet in front of his device that it runs a browser that we also don't control with a home network that he has or an office network or whatever network he's using. We don't know what that network is going to be. And all that happens over the internet. Another big word that can say a lot of different things. Okay. Now, this can cause a lot of problems. And a lot of these problems are not going to be your problems. If you feel, come with them to a developer and say, you know, this doesn't work for my customer. Or this user complains about A. The developers are going to throw you away and say, it works for us. It's a problem on his end. But if you are dealing with support or you want to actually solve a problem for your user, you can't really go to him and tell him, no, it's not, it, it works on my end, on my machine it is working. Okay? That's not a good answer. We want to be able to assist our problem or our customer, troubleshoot his issues, and guide him through a process that will better his experience at the end of the day. Now, what I want to say in all this is that at the end of the day, we aren't in control. Okay. A main part of the work that we do in support today is to try and analyze and understand what are the issues that our user is having. This can be related to connectivity issues, he can't connect, quality issues, you know, he's got packet loss, he can't hear well, the volume is not good, uh, the video doesn't seem right. And then it can be issues related to your actual service. And you need to be able to understand if the problem belongs on your end, in the cloud vendor end, in the user's end, and if it is in the user's end, how are you going to help him out in solving his problems? Okay? Now, I want to kind of stop here because I'm talking too much already. And I'm going to give uh, Joe, uh, like the keys and let him drive this and show us a demo. And before we start the demo, um, so Joe came to me like, almost a year ago or something like that and said, we want to use a service. What well, we need service. He explains to him what he wants and I tell him, well, no, no, we don't have such a thing in TestRTC. This is not what we do. Why are you here? You know, we can give you something else. And he says, no, no, this is what I want. And then we decided to take the risk and build it um, because it made sense. And through that process, I learned a lot. So what Joe is going to show you is exactly what it is uh, that he is using today in support at TalkDesk to assist their customers. So you know the stage is yours. Absolutely, thank you, Tahi. Sure. Um, okay, so as Tahi said, what you're going to see is a live product. Okay, you can even check it out. Uh, it's on our web page. Let me know if you can see my screen. Tahi, can you confirm? Yes, yes, I can see you. Okay, perfect. Okay, guys, so um, this is something that we, we embedded in our page, okay? And I'm, I'm sorry if, like, if, I, if I mentioned any uh, non -tech, incorrect non-technical term because I'm not a technical person, okay? I just try to solve people's problems and help my team to solve them. Um, and as Sahi said, uh, we are clearly not in control when it comes to this, okay? Uh, so 
what what this product is helping us out is, uh, I, and I'm going to give you a number of examples in in a few minutes, um, is to really like troubleshoot uh, my team to troubleshoot what why users are complaining that they cannot hear the other hand or that they cannot they, the other hand cannot hear them, so on and so forth. Okay, so let let's go to the demo first. It's one of the requirements I actually had for 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 Tsahi and Test RTC is I want this to be super easy. Okay, so that was the first thing. I want this to be a click of a button, and the outcome of that click of a button is like so huge at the moment that I, I cannot even uh, explain. But I will try to do it. So, without further ado, let's go to the demo. So if we click start. And Sahi, I don't know. I don't know if you want to explain what is happening on the background right now. You're muted, Sahi. Yes, now I'm not. So what the system does now, it uh, collects information from Joao's machine and network running towards the talk desk backend directly. So it's actually checking what goes on and trying to understand the network conditions. All the information is going to be gathered in different blocks and widgets here that are customizable. And in this case, this is what talk desk we're looking for. Information around throughput, voice call quality, uh, turn connectivity, location, bandwidth speed, and ping. Um, and all of that information is going to be available the user is going to see it immediately on his screen, but Joe, on his end, his support team, will be able to see that later, after the fact as well, and be able to troubleshoot with that data. So think that you have a customer, and this was something that Joe actually exp explained to me. You've got a customer, the customer starts complaining. Now, when you want to treat that customer, you need to collect the data to understand what's going on. So you need to know what machine he's using, if there are issues in the device, what's the network like? Is there a firewall causing problems or a VPN? Or there is some bandwidth issues there? All of that data needs to be collected and that can take a few hours or even days of back and forth emails, do this, do that, let's check this. Are you using the same machine or a different one? Is it the same location or, you know, just to understand that the customer is doing what you've asked of him. Customers usually don't like following instructions. Mm -hmm. so, the end result is this specific stream screen after pressing a single a single start button. Floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, so one of the actual requirements we had was that we could see this. Okay, so that we can we can ask the customer, Mister Customer, can you do this three times a day? Can you do this in the morning? Can you do this in the afternoon? And can you do this later in the day? Okay, so that we can really see uh, what's happening and if there is variation through the day. Okay. Um, what we also asked is make it easier and make make it make it easier for us to know who the customer is. Okay, so at this point, we already have uh, something stored in the backend, but uh, on top of that, we also have something really cool, which is uh, you just need to fill out your name here. We don't need to even to put the the. Um, the title, this is optional. And if you click this button, it will be captured in our ticketing tool, okay? And what the agents then do is they just um, uh, merge the ticket, uh, the existing tickets uh, with this one, new one that the tool will create, okay? Uh, what we have also done is we have some, some, some help text here. Uh, this is not really for, we don't want the users to be like proficient in exactly knowing what all of this means, but we also have created the, an article in, in our knowledge base that explains a bit uh, high level to a non-technical person what this is, and some of them actually make smart, really smart questions, okay? I think there are a few things that I want to present here. Like, sure. why do you have such big uplink of 25 megabit per second? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. So I guess you have fiber to the home. I have FTTH, one gigabit up, uh, down, 200 megs up, I think. OK, now my assumption, by the way, is the jitter that you see today or now on <laughs> bandwidth speed is because we're on a video call in parallel on the same machine on the same network. <laughs> yeah. OK, Probably. so 
these are some of the things that you can just you know get as a glance by looking at the results. Okay. Thank you, Sahi. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we typically. I'm going to explain a bit what what are the things we see. Okay, what what are the things we are looking at, but just to give you a brief overview, like. Um, if, if we have a call center in a specific location and that call center uh, has 500 people, we know that there are 500 people there. We typically look at the throughputs, okay? How many how many people can we have in that location? We combine that with the bandwidth speeds and also the region that they are, they are pinging, the, um, the, the, um, the what they are pinging into what region, okay? Um, and we have, uh, we use the Amazon servers as well. So, uh, what what test RTC did for us is is that it actually displays the two closest locations, which is also very smart. Um, there is a question: Where is the peer being connected to? So that depends for which of the you know, of the tests here. Some of the tests connect to themselves, like the throughput we send and receive through the turn servers that are available or the ones that we're checking against, and these are on the talk desk infrastructure. In other cases, it connects to talk desk infrastructure in the backend. For example, the call quality connects directly to an IVR on talk desk. And the bandwidth speed test runs in front of our machines or talk test RTC machines within the same data center locations on Amazon AWS as talk desk is running. And we manage and host them. So we get, you know, an at a glance information that is really as close as possible to what the real uh, infrastructure, VoIP infrastructure for WebRTC is running from. Sure, Chris. Oh, Can you show the back end? Yes. Okay, so this is our history. See, we have, we have, some people running the test now, maybe a few a few of the attendees <laughs> of the webinar. Um, we have my test here, as you guys can see, and if I click it, it will just open the test that I, I was just in, okay? And typically the way the team works is uh, we have a highly specialized team, network engineering team, that is looking at all of these, especially on the implementation stage, so something that I'm going to I'm going to also talk about <laughs> really cool view. Um, and also um, our support team, they work more on the basis of uh, the, the ticketing tool that we have integrated with, with our network test. They just go and ju they just see which user is uh, they, they, are, they are testing with. And then um, basically uh, they, they match uh, the, what the user is complaining with what they see in, in the test. Okay. Sahi, is there something specific that you would like to show here on the on the on the tool? No, it's just the fact that there is a workflow. It's not just mm -hmm. shows the information to the user; it collects the data and makes, I guess, your life a lot easier in using it. Absolutely, Correct? yeah, absolutely, and it gives us like it gives us flexibility and agility. Okay, I think that's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, can you stop sharing and I'll continue the presentation? I think you've got a few more things that are far more interesting, at least to me. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I guess it starts here. So I've asked Zhao for this, the purpose of this, not just to show the tool or show a demo because that's like, you know, it's nice, but to show a few real life examples of things that happen to them and why that's important to them and what they do with it afterwards. And you came up with these four examples, which are really interesting. I was, you know, bandwidth test was easy for me and turn connectivity was also obvious, but I didn't know about the other two and for the ones that I did know, not exactly where you needed them or what was the timing in which they worked really well. So you could, if you can share that, that would be great. Absolutely. Okay. So um, first things, uh, first thing that is important to mention, okay, we wanted a tool that is easy to use so that we can use it on the full customer life cycle, okay? At the, at the click of a button, uh, during uh, pre-sale, during implementation, and during the, the, the duration of the contract, okay? And hopefully uh, the contract is, is renewed <laughs> in the end. Um, so 
I have four examples and we have examples uh, for these uh, three different stages that I've mentioned. Okay. So this is the, mo the, like the most typical in pre-sales uh, stage. Okay. So we are scoping a customer. We are working with them. We are trying to, to make, to, to understand if things work on this, on the sales piece, on the commercial side, but we also have our networking engineering team assessing, um, what, what, what the customer, uh, what the customer's network is like, okay, and this is a, a very frequent one. As as Tahi mentioned, it's not so interesting. It's just turn connectivity, and we see like maybe 30, 40 percent customers that have uh, UDP ports uh, closed. It means that they are blocking U UDP access, and this will uh, greatly impact voice quality. Okay, uh, if we if we onboard with that customer. No, Sorry, just if you if you want to compliment yes. technically, yeah, go for it. No, I think I've got a question here because mm -hmm. for, for me it's obvious. You run a test, something doesn't work, you know, go open UDP or check if UDP is there or not there. What impact does this specific test has for you when it comes to dealing with dealing with these pre-sale activities? In terms of our, uh, what we are going to do next, you mean? No, mostly before you had this tool. Okay, what was the process that you went through in pre-sale to get a customer to say, no, it would be nice if you could open up your UDP ports? Absolutely. So that, that that's a very interesting question. So sometimes we have very aggressive timelines, okay? And like, imagine like deploying this in, in, in two weeks, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, just the fact that some of these customers are not so big, okay? Like, uh, let's picture a 15 people call center, okay? They don't have network engineers with them, you know. They they probably have a consultant that they have hired somewhere, and then they are going to have to get a new consultant. That consultant is, is going to have to come, and then uh, he, he, he will have to see the network, and then he will have to assess, and then he will have to open uh, the ports, okay? So that process usually takes time, and sometimes we are looking for agility, okay? So... If we if we know that this is there before uh, we start or we sign with them, it's already a good sign because we we say okay. So here's our recommendation: when we sign the contract with you, you need to do this, this, and that. Okay. Otherwise, we can. It's basically leverage on our side. Okay. Okay. So not, and now we have a visual way to show them that as well. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, to your question, Alex, if you block UDP then calls need to go over TCP or TLS. If they go over TCP, then the latency is a bit bigger, but the real issue is once you have packet losses on the network. TCP has a retransmission mechanism, and this means that if there are packet losses, it's going to make things worse. Because with something like WebRTC, you want things to be in real time, and if there's packet losses, the first thing you probably are going to do is reduce the bitrate to fit the network that you have, or just say, you know, ignore that, let's move on. But TCP doesn't allow you to do that. It will retranspit and guarantees delivery, and that's going to be really not nice for the voice. Okay, thanks, Chris, for the written answer as well. So let's go to the other example. And, and this one was really interesting. Uh, you, please either... put... Yeah. Yes, you, I think these, these types of questions are better left to the end, so put it in the Q&A, and we'll get there, or just... Write it down here once we're done with the with this, okay? I'm not going to leave you without hanging without an answer. So the second one. Thank you. Okay. So the second example is uh, also takes place in uh, pre-sale or implementation. Okay, it can happen in both. Uh, imagine that uh, you ask the customer, or um, like depending on where they are, um, to to run the network tests. Okay. And the, re the result comes out um, on the location uh, item. You see uh, org uh, zscaler, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm just making zscaler here because it's one example we had. Okay, mm -hmm. there are multiple prox proxy providers, so this doesn't mean that they will not be able to run. This means that they typically this typically increases latency and jitter to voice traffic, and we typically see that on the test itself. Okay, so the customer says. Yeah, you, we have an awesome network. We do this, we do that, but then we end up uh, we, we we end up with them uh, filtering the, the traffic through a proxy, okay? Which uh, typically uh, gives us bad call quality as well. Um, so typically, what we do in this scenario, and maybe this is the question that you were going to ask, Sahi, we 
we ask them to um, apply a rule so that uh, uh, our traffic does not get routed into um, the proxy. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting. And this is the one that they really missed. And it gets me into thinking of you know, having a conversation with you later about that, of us being able to find these organizations beforehand and even marking them in the UI. But that's, let's leave that for later. Mm -hmm. um, let's move on to the third one. Okay. 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 So this is a typical um, scenario where the customer is using a VPN. Okay. And we don't know. And most of the times you ask me, uh, are, are they being unfair? Why don't they mention that they don't, that they have a VPN? Sometimes they don't know. Okay. Like mm -hmm. small call centers, they don't have a net. They don't know if they are using a VPN or not. Uh, and this is a very useful way because since you are not in control, you can really see if they are using a VPN or not. Okay. So I think this is a, a scenario where we have a customer in Portugal, okay? We asked him to run the test and the location comes out Australia, okay? So imagine that you didn't know that he was in, Aust that he was in Portugal, okay? You can see that he that the test is coming out in Australia, but he's pinging 341 me milliseconds to, to Sydney, okay? So you immediately know, okay, something's wrong, something's not right. And you can then go and investigate and ask the customer, okay, so where are you located? Why are you coming out in Australia? And why are you pinging so high to Australia, basically? Mm -hmm. So this is like a finding expedition that you're doing over understanding why the network feels the, the way it feels, that the process of, in, let's call it, installing the cloud contact center for a customer. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And the fourth one? So the fourth example, um, typically uh, during uh, contracts, okay, uh, and this is, I think, one of our biggest struggles at at uh, TalkDesk and maybe at any company that is that is in this business, okay, which is the use of Wi-Fi, and uh, what we say is um, we do not say that it doesn't work on Wi-Fi. We say we recommend Ethernet, okay. And uh, sometimes the customers are not honest, okay? And they use Wi-Fi. And a really good way we have to know is uh, to look at the bandwidth speed uh, part of the tests, okay? High jitter, ever, I think everyone knows here that much much more, more technical than me. I've, I've learned my way through, through the bits and bots, okay? But jitter, I know it's a variation in latency, I guess. Sahi, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and yeah, so we see, if we see high latency, we know something's wrong. So we can either know that this is a con congested network or that this is, um, or that the customer is using Wi Fi. And the way we see that is we ask them to run multiple tests and we see if there is variation. And if by the end of the day or early morning, their jitter is really low, we know that there is a problem with the network. And we go and ask them, can, can, you, can you show us the utilization of the network? Can we see if there's peaks? If not, we will know instantly that they are using Wi-Fi and we recommend bringing them back into Ethernet. You meant jitter is high, not jitter is low. Yeah, jitter is high, sorry, yeah. Okay, Okay. so it's kind of, you end up using the bandwidth test and other parameters also to hunt down Wi-Fi or bad networks just because you've got that jitter information in there. Correct, yes. Okay, now to your question, the jitter here is in milliseconds in most places, but it's simply the variation of the delay across packets, whatever that means. And in each one of these uh, test boxes where Jitter appears, it is a slightly different thing. And what we're doing now, again, because uh, Tog discussed us, is to create a kind of a knowledge base article for these tests to give a better explanation of what they are doing. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was funny because you could have used the problem with this tool just by running a few tests from good networks, bad networks, and this deduce from that what works and what doesn't. Okay. So these were like four examples of where the tool comes in handy. And uh, my understanding from you is that it goes through the whole life cycle of dealing with customers today. Okay. And that is exactly what we wanted, right? We wanted to simplicity. Uh, Runs on uh, runs on Chrome. That is our recommended browser. Mm -hmm. Can be easily captured by um, our network, our support team, and also has a backend to control uh, multiple tests at the same run by the same customer. Okay. And today, if we look at that, if I you know you've asked, so I checked in the backend what happens, and you know, just getting the numbers. And 
I guess this is the activity that you've seen so far of the tool at TalkDesk, right? Yes, exactly, yeah. So Six months been... running, multiple locations, uh, 57 plus countries. I was surprised by this number. Mm -hmm. um, and 4,000 in, in total, I think over 4,000 network tests performed now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, this is a lot, a lot of added value for us. Okay, but I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, for us, it was very important to make sure that you like this tool and that it's a, it's what you're looking for. It started as you know, a semi project for you, but on both sides, I'm my understanding is that we understood immediately that what we want to do is a service that runs software as a service that you can use. Which brings me to this. Um, today, what we are doing is we're renaming this product and we're going to call it quality rtc um it is by design and from the way we built it from the ground up it's fully customizable and brandable so the same as talkdesk has their own page widgets backend infrastructure workflow connecting to their uh, ticketing system all of these things can be done and customized for a customer including the infrastructure um it has an easy to use workflow today and there's also an SDK that is available to embed it if you want to put it directly within your application logic in certain places um so that's that's what i wanted uh, we're at the q a and if you want to check out the tool and the service not the talk desk one but you know go brutal on our own go to networktest.rtc.com you'll see a slightly different ui slightly different tests and you can play with it um, let's open up the, the floor for questions so alexander the jitter one milliseconds i've answered that and uh, yes vincent this is open for other vendors and we've already uh, got a few customers lined up for that um so alexi Simulating bad network connections for testing. This is something else that we do at TestRTC. It's unrelated to that. You can check out testrtc.com, create an account and play with it. We did that out of the box today. This was you know, our tester when he wanted to test and play with a, uh, this product that we've built for TalkDesk. It was, it was funny. He built simply built an automation for that page inside TestRTC and then tested the product from there to see that everything's working, that we actually provide and report the correct numbering there. Um, the SDK is ra rather new, Arun, so come back to us. Thomas, pricing as well, just contact directly. Go to tzachiletestrtc.com, reply to the emails, uh, the email that I'll send shortly uh, with the recording, and we can go from there for those that want that. Let's see the questions that we've got here in the Q&A. So David, I'm going back to your question, okay? Um, some of our call results <clears throat> in no audio and sometimes no video either. From the start in our free switch recording, even though free switch shows a public IP for both streams and we attach the video element as soon as the video triggers on track. Do you have a tool to help identify the calls? Um, not yet. And that's different because my guess is it is sometimes and not necessarily for the same user on the same network but happens arbitrary. Uh, you can connect me outside of um, you know, this. You know how to find me, David, as far as I remember. So just email me and I'll see if I can help you with that. Okay. Um, Gabe, does the tool help identify problems like buffer bloat? Um, I don't know, to tell you the truth. My guess is that it will simply because it is doing a real-time voice call or real-time video call to the backend and checking their things like the bitrate, jitter, MOS quality, latency, and packet loss. So it should be able to understand and identify these issues. The speed test probably does the same to some extent, okay? But I'm not sure about the speed test as much as I am about the call test. How do you determine low video resolution issues during the call? Uh, Mukesh, there is no such thing as low video resolution. The issue with low video resolution is one of two. The first one is either, uh, well, one of three. It's either the camera that you use don't have high resolution, so you won't get resolution. The second issue is that the CPU that does the encoding doesn't have enough capacity 
So you're simply burning the CPU. And the third one is you don't have enough bitrate. If you don't have enough bitrate, there is not much you can send. And if you can only send something like 100 or 200 kilobits per second of video, you can't get anywhere above QVGA, which is quite a low resolution. Okay? Um, so in many cases, what happens uh, with low resolution is that companies go and put uh, pre-call testing to check that the network works, doesn't work. Our service can be used to do that via the SDK or through that page. If a customer complains, you can send him there. It all depends on the specific scenario. <clears throat> what you should also do is you know, collect the statistics and look at them to understand which of these issues are. Finally, a question for you, Joe, uh, from you. We've had Hello. numerous customers. Yes. Yeah, I think it was the same question that you had posted yes. on the chat. Yeah, makes yes, sense. Sorry. Thank you, Yuk, for the question. Uh, the, the answer is no, okay? We have never had a customer that uh, did not open UDP for talk test traffic, okay? We have had some other customers that have... Um, yeah, have you heard about those smart QoS devices? I don't know, Safi, if, if you have heard about them, um, where we cannot actually like apply QoS, uh, which is prioritized traffic, uh, so on and so forth. But we have never had a customer that did not want to, uh, to open UDP for us. I had in another case customers that had issues because of uh, Meraki wireless networks that, you know, simply shut down BitTorrent, which made a lot of issues. Um, no good solution there. <clears throat> Any planned features for the network test in the future? A lot of them. Uh, we have, well, I guess, two big surprises in our plate. One of them, well, both of them Joe is aware of. One of them is we're going to improve the backend considerably. So it becomes a kind of a BI tool. Okay, that allows you to do a bit more analytics and grouping to understand what happens with the test, same test running <clears throat> within the same location and things like that. Uh, the other one is we are going to introduce a kind of an on-premise probe that has zero install footprint to it that you can simply run in a customer location for a few days or weeks or whatever. Uh, Howie, the SDK is written in JavaScript, so it fits anywhere browser we don't have it yet for mobile if that's the actual answer there the sdk also allows you to work without our ui at all so you can put whatever you want there and just collect data in the back end you know that kind of a thing any tools to inject packet loss from the client side <clears throat> yes that's test rtc that's what it does the other products that we have there for testing not for support. This is a support tool, so the idea isn't to put problems, but to solve them. Uh, Mohan, turn connectivity values. Is it measured with stun packets? No, stun isn't turn. So the way the turn connectivity values that we have there today, and I checked that this morning, that is the time that it takes to connect the peer connection until we can actually start sending data on it <clears throat> to the turn server. Uh, we are going to add or introduce more numbers there to make to have more data available. We're not sure how exactly. We, we're sure how. We're not sure how we are going to show that or if it's just going to be part of the logs. Let's see. Do any analysis takes place with regards to the user's computer specs? So we're not looking at the CPU load because <clears throat> it's kind of impossible to do from a browser today or at least... Google is trying to shut down all of these things due to fingerprinting problems. Uh, so we're not doing that, okay? Uh, we really can't. We are thinking of doing something uninstallable, but that's not for the near future. Um, <clears throat> what we do do today is start, try to collect the, besides the location, also information about the browser and whatever we can on the machine and have that in the logs. So it doesn't show up, but you have that information. <clears throat> Sorry, I cut the call a few days ago. Okay, uh, Mukesh, I'm not sure what to do with that. It's like we see a lot of video issues due to network. Okay, not sure I can solve that. 
Does the tool support Edge or IE? Nothing support IE. Edge is Chrome today, starting, well, last week. So the answer is yes for, for Edge. Um, we have a minor issue in Firefox. We're going to fix that. That's a non-issue for us. Um, in mobile, it's ugly but working. We're going to solve the ugly part. The working part, it's already working, so I'm fine. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm moving now to the uh, chat questions. I'm actually running it from my phone from time to time, just you know, when I get complaints that it doesn't work or you know, check this thing out. So I'm trying it out. And also, when I'm going to different locations, trying to catch this interesting network data. Let's see. Uh, uh, uh. How about video freezes issues? What we did for now, um, <clears throat> the first product or first release came to TalkDesk, and that's a voice-only uh, platform or voice-only solution. Adding video is just a matter of adding a widget, and it's part of the customization process and part of the pricing plan of the, of the product already. Uh, it doesn't do any recommendations around transcoding, Harry. You should simply use Opus. Yeah. How can we identify the call as video drop, audio drop for a call? You need to collect the data on your own in the backend and do the analysis for that. Um, uh, let's see. Is uh, Yes, quality RTC SDK today is for the web only. <clears throat> if you need that, Prasad, we can talk and see how to accommodate for that. Remember, we're, sim we're somewhere between version 1 and version 2 of the product, so not everything is available out of the box. Suppose I want to use it in a call center and there are 10 concurrent calls. Do we get the stats for each call? So this tool doesn't, um, doesn't run on all the contact center at once. It runs on a single machine when the person st presses a start button. So it's not really meant to check the uh, capacity that you have within a contact center. And I want to also refer it to you, uh, Joao. Mm -hmm. um, do you look at the tool or try to use it to understand if the network is capable of running you know, multiple sessions or what the capacity of the contact center to you know, take care of 10, 20, 30 agents or whatever? Yes, we do use the throughput for that. OK. So if you've got a small contact center with 10 concurrent calls, and the way this network is probably probably configured, I'm assuming that, again, running the test and looking at the throughput will give you a good indicator of that uh, potential, you know, <clears throat> the potential to do that. Um, bum, bum. Yes, and we also, on the throughput test, something that is very interesting and fr from using from our experience is that the less variation you have between the minimum and the max, the better, you know, because if you have, if you say like it can support a hundred sessions, but it in on the minimum, it says like it's, it support three sessions. It's very, mm -hmm. it's typically very, the outcome is very bad. So we want like high number of sessions and the closest, the closest as possible. Okay. So the, let's say the gap between the minimum and maximum should be. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, Pierre, uh, we started providing the headers, but not really. We're just providing the one that Google said that they're going to shut down in a year or two. Um, <clears throat> yes, that's a good idea. I'm guessing that we'll add that if someone will want it. And Joao, just tell Fernando to send an email about that so I don't forget to do it for you. Um, <laughs> let's see. We've got more questions here. So this one I think that I answered. Any suggestion on how to test if the firewall network configuration kills long live calls like WebSocket? Long live connection like WebSocket. So, and look at the first problem with that is that in order to test that, you need to run a long lived connection. Um, this is one of the things that we're going to be able to do with the on premise probe that has a zero install footprint to it. Uh, and it's based off of this product. So, we are going to use this product and infrastructure to. Um, to run the next one, or let's say the on-premise probe. If you're interested, just contact me later on that one. For those who don't know my direct email, I'll put it on the chat <clears throat> to make it simpler. This one. Okay. 
let's go to the last two questions and I guess we'll be done after that. Does the tool provide info whether the user connected using Wi-Fi wired? <clears throat> so this is a problem. We can we try doing that with the network information that uh, Chrome provides. No go. It shows almost always Wi-Fi or 3G or 4G, sorry, networks that don't make sense to what you're really running them from. So we decided to, you know, it's available, but it's not really useful. Uh, what we're doing instead of that is offering all of that information so you can get hints today around Wi-Fi versus wired. So it's something that your support will need to be a bit proficient by running a few tests with customers and clients and understanding how that works. In the demo, lots of stats about bandwidth network at Serad were shown, uh, but does it give stats of a single user considering he's a VDI user, like CPU utils, IOPS, etc.? We don't have access to this data from the browser. So we just can't. Okay. Remember that uh, the first requirement is it for this to be simple. I don't need to install anything. I don't need to do anything. I just share a URL and that URL is going to be give me the most amount of information that I can get in the least amount of time. So what was really important, and Joe, fix me if I'm saying anything wrong, the most important thing was to get the information as soon as possible, as fast as possible, from the user's network towards the support team to be able to deal with that problem. Absolutely. Simplicity was key, you know. And I'm, I'm very glad that we, we don't have something that needs to be installed or needs authorization because, you know, some, some, some customers, as you, as you know, they, have, uh, they, have, they are not admins of their own laptop. So the fact that they can run this uh, without asking permission to anyone, it's perfect. Like our consultants, when they go on site the first time, they just connect to the network and they do the test and we can like get the feeling of what that network will be like, you know? So it's, it's quite important. I also see a question from Alexei here. And I think that's one for me. Alexei, the minimum hardware config for our customers uh, is on our uh, knowledge base, okay? So if you go to support.test.com, you will see we have an, an article uh, that refers to the network configurations and also the machine configurations that we require. Okay. So I guess we'll stop here. And Sahil, I'm going to answer your question simply by saying, Shajil. Okay, I'm going to stop here and say <clears throat> that the recording is going to be uh, sent to the people that have registered uh, to this webinar, and it's going to be publicly available on YouTube probably in a day or two as well. Joao, I, I want to really thank you for being here with me and you know, saying yes and taking this you know, journey with me in the last few weeks of getting this done. And I want to thank everyone else that joined us today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And you know, if you're interested, just email me or ping us or try out our tool. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tahi. Speak later, bye.